How long have you been taking heroin? About two years, I guess. What about before then? Well, I smoked marijuana for a while. Growing up, you may have heard concerned adults warn you about the dangers of cannabis as a gateway drug. Whether these cautionary tales came from your mom, your neighbor, or your fifth grade dare teacher, they all carry the same message. Don't smoke pot because it'll cause you to get hooked on increasingly dangerous drugs and ruin your life! <laughs> This week, we spoke with Dr. Strauss, professor of psychiatry and medical director of the Stuart and Linda Resnick Neuropsychiatric Hospital at UCLA to find out if marijuana actually is a gateway drug. On the question of is cannabis a gateway drug, most of the research of the last 10 to 15 years suggests unlikely, but there actually is a recent study which raises some concern. According to Dr. Strauss, this study involved individuals who used recreational marijuana and checked back with them years later to examine their habits. The finding in that study was that recreational cannabis use seems to increase the risk that uh, within a few years, at least some people will be using other substances, including opioids, in a non-prescribed, non-medical way. But there are other factors to consider to completely understand the relationship between recreational cannabis use and the use of other substances down the line. Does that for sure say that cannabis is a gateway or causal? No, it doesn't. It might simply be that the people in this particular trial at time zero uh, were people who had a greater risk for using many, many substances, and this was just part of the natural history of the evolution of their use disorder. Dr. Strauss even spoke to us about studies including the 2015 study by Powell, Pakula, and Jacobson and the National Bureau of Economic Research with evidence pointing to the cannabis reducing substance abuse in specific situations, as seems to be the case with opioids. There's some very interesting epidemiologic data that looked at death certificates in states over about a 10 year period after medical marijuana legalization. And very interestingly, in about the first 10 years after legalization, there were very robust reductions in opioid overdose deaths. If this study can be replicated, then the important thing to discover is which mechanism is actually causing the reduction in opioid overdose deaths. Might be that cannabis use relieves the symptoms of opioid withdrawal or craving, and that in that way might reduce opioid overdose deaths. There is though some uh, animal and very small human trials data to suggest that at least one component of cannabis, that is CBD or cannabidiol, may actually reduce opioid craving in people who have opioid addiction. So again, there's evidence that shows a correlation between marijuana and the use of other harder drugs, but there is a lot more research to be done to truly understand which factors specifically cause the relationship. For now, you'll have to consider that your mom just might have been oversimplifying. Thanks for watching and let us know which cannabis questions you'd like us to explore in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe for more episodes of WeedWise.